guys and welcome to my 58th video. Thank you so much for joining me if you are a return subscriber or hello if you are new. My name's Adrena, I'm an Australian teacher and mum currently on a break at the moment trying to figure out this whole teacherpreneur online space selling my teaching resources and clip art on Teachers Pay Teachers and online. Now today's video I'm excited because we have another PowerPoint tutorial. <laughs> so in today's tutorial I'm actually going to be showing you how to make some cool technology clip art in PowerPoint. They're actually so easy to make. Anyone can do this you guys, I promise you. I'm going to be showing you how to make this. A very simple iPad or tablet, whatever you want to call it. And the next thing I'm going to teach you how to make is this cool iPhone or smartphone with a few little messages on the screen. So I know that in this day and age, technology is so embedded into teaching and into the curriculum and into everything. The world is very much technology based. So I thought, why not make something that, you know, some teachers might be able to use out there. And if you are somebody that is wanting to create clip art and you just don't have the amount of money to spend on buying clip art, this is a great way to start by learning how to do it for free in PowerPoint before you get into buying things for yourself if you don't have the budget yet to spend on clip art. So I will just quickly preface this and say if you are wanting to sell any of the things that we've made today, you do have to make sure that you have the commercial business license for PowerPoint. I have that. Uh, however, if you are just wanting to learn, just using a normal PowerPoint, the personal one is absolutely fine. So just keep that in mind and I'm not going to hold you any longer. I'm going to jump straight into this tutorial. Let's go. Hello, hello, and welcome to this technology PowerPoint clip art tutorial. So in today's tutorial lesson, I'm going to basically be showing you how to create this iPhone or smartphone clip art image. And I'm going to be showing you also how to make this iPad in a clip art style. So you guys, these are so simple and so easy anyone can literally do this so i just thought i'd share some tips and tricks along the way because i know for teachers starting out or if you are wanting to create like worksheets for teachers pay teachers for example and say if you're just starting and you don't want to invest in clip art right away then <laughs> i'm just showing you that you can start for free well you do have to pay for powerpoint if you're going to sell things commercially but Without having to buy additional clip art, you can actually make clip art within PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you how to make these two things today. And I will just show you a little version that we have here. So you've got the black screen and you can add text on top with this one. And we can also convert it into a writing page, for example, like the one I have here on screen. So I'm going to jump in. I don't want this tutorial to be too long because I tend to ramble. So let's get started straight away. So this is my workspace one. Okay, so we're going to start off with creating the iPad first. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Now, if you have made anything on PowerPoint in the past with me from watching any of my previous videos, you'll know that I usually like to work in a portrait view just because through trial and error I've played around and this is the best way that I have created clip art in in regards to scaling it when I have it in the horizontal or landscape workspace or page uh, I find it to be a little bit harder to create things at the right size so I always keep it to portrait and so yeah I'd recommend that if you can so what we're going to start off with is if you've never touched PowerPoint before, I, a lot of you guys probably following along have, so you'll know the basics of it, which is amazing. But if you haven't, then the only things that we're really using here today is the shapes icon here or shapes button here, and you can find that under insert. So we're going to go to shapes first, and we are going to go down to this shape here which is called the rounded rectangle. The rounded rectangle is honestly so versatile and honestly it's probably my favorite shape <laughs> from PowerPoint. You can do a lot with it. So all you're gonna do is literally just drag it out onto your page. Now in some past tutorials I have given dimensions I'm not going to do that here today, but if you, I don't know if you better see it, but 
you will be able to see up here in the top right hand corner if you want to do exact dimensions but with this you really don't need to have exact dimensions because you'll be able to make your own pretty simply and easily and you can manipulate it and alter it to how you like it so I'm not going to give those exact dimensions but they are there if you want to see so anyway what we're going to do so we've just spread that one out on the page and we're going to go to this little yellow box up here and we're just kind of going to move it until we can see it looks more like the iPad shape which is probably kind of a bit more like this. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to select that and what you'll see is you'll come under, whenever you select a shape, you'll come to shape format and what we want is we want to go to align and we're just going to go down and click align to center. So that will just center it to our page so we know that that is central to this page. So what we're going to do now, if you are on a Mac, you can press command D as a shortcut if you're on a PC, I think it's Control D. So for me, I'm just going to press Command D and that's just going to duplicate this whole shape. You can obviously just do copy and paste as well, but Command or Control D is just a simple, easy shortcut when you're working with PowerPoint. So we're just going to make that a little bit smaller. Now don't get too worried or pedantic about the size or anything and where it is where it is right now because we're going to align them anyway, just like we did to the center of the page for the first shape. So we just want a, a basic shape just so it looks a bit more like the iPad shape. You can alter it again if you want by pressing that little yellow box and moving it. But I'm just going to keep it at about that, I think. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly change the color. Click that blue color just for now so we can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select off my picture for a minute. And I'm just going to have a look to see how out of line it is. And I can see it's probably slightly out of line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on the front shape. And I'm going to click shift and click on the back shape and you'll see that they're both selected now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the align box and click align to center. You won't see anything moved uh, so obviously just there because my shape was pretty central but I will just show you an example if it was a little bit out of line or even if I say for example made it smaller you'll see if I had it aligned like that and I clicked uh, shift click on the back shape and I did a line and a line to center you'll see that it's tried to align that shape to the center of that shape if that makes any sense so I'm just going to go Control Z to go back because I was happy with that as the shape and we are ready to just quickly alter it one more time before we're going to color it and add some more shapes to it so I can see that it's got a small little bar down the bottom here and usually iPads have a bit more of a thicker band down the bottom so you can have if you depending what ipad that you're using but some of the old ipads do have that little space where you can add the circle button there some of them obviously have not got the circle button anymore depends what kind of ipad that you're trying to create so anyway i'm just going to lift that up a bit then i'm just going to go to insert i'm just going to go back to shapes and i'm going to go and select the circle which is actually called the oval in the basic shapes. I'm just going to draw a little circle here and I'm just going to go to align. And then what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to click shift on the back shape and I'm just going to click align, align to center. And you'll notice how that circle just went straight to the middle there. So that's what we want. And I can see it's a little bit too, it's going to be cut off here. It's probably a bit big, so I could probably make it slightly smaller. I just don't want to make it too stretched out that it looks funny, but just slightly smaller. And I'm just going to click on that circle again and go Command D. And I'm just going to make a smaller version of that circle. And if you do really want to get pedantic, if you zoomed up, you could also do that with the actual circle too. I don't think this one will need aligning, but you can do that. It's a good habit to get into actually to align your uh, clip art just so you know that it's like in the exact way that you sort of want it and need it. And that way you're not kind of just guessing. It's just good to know that that's actually a feature that PowerPoint has. All right, so we're looking pretty good so far. Now we're just going to change the colors, the thickness of the lines and the screen. So... Of course, you can change this iPad to any color that you want in PowerPoint and you can do the screen any color you want. But just for this one, I'm just going to show you the typical standard black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to select all of these. 
just with my mouse and I'm going to go up to shape format and then I'm going to actually go to just straight under shape outline the little arrow down there and you'll see something called weight and I'm just going to go all the way down to the four and a half points and that will turn all of my lines into four and a half points and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back up to that shape outline and just change that color to black now I'm going to change the weight of this one down below because you can see here that's just way too thick so I'm just going to go and select just those two go back up to shape format back to shape outline weight and we might change it to two and a half actually we might even go to about three that looks a bit too thin all right so three is looking good and again uh, with your circle you can always adjust this you can make this higher we might actually do that and we might just move him up a little bit more and expand him out. Alrighty, so we've done that. We've changed the thickness on that circle now. Okay, so now I'm going to change the screen. Now you can change it to your standard black by going up to the shape format, going to shape fill and just changing it to a standard black. However, if you want a bit of a shine, just like I have here, I'll show you how to do that too. So click on the screen. We're going to look to the right and you'll see something called format shape. And underneath that, you'll see that there is the solid fill already selected. All we want to do is go one down to gradient fill and that's going to change it to a gradient way of coloring it in. And so we don't obviously want a yellow one. So I'm just going to go here to preset gradients to the right here in this little square blue box and you will notice that there's a few different presets you can actually choose from so i'm going to choose this bottom one here gray radial gradient accent three click on that so you'll see that there's four little nodes here and to be able to get that bit of a shine i'm going to change some of these to black so i'm going to go and change this first one to black change those two to black and then on this third one i'm actually going to take it away and to get rid of it or take it away all you need to do is you can see where it says gradient stops there's an addition sign or a minus sign a subtraction sign just press the subtraction sign and you'll see that it's taken it away what you can do too if you're wanting that to be not as shiny you can grab this node or grab this bar and just drag it down a little bit to however you like and so I'm just going to probably have it about there but again, just play around and see how you like it. Okay, so simple and easy. All you need to do now is click on the back shape, go back up to shape format. We're going to go and change it to white. And we'll do the same and we'll just select that. We'll select the button and we'll do the same with that and just click on white. I'll just change the background for a second so we can see what this looks like. So that is your iPad. Now I will say you can obviously change this iPad to any color that you like. So if you just go back up here, you could change it to blue. You could change it to red. You could change it to whatever color you wanted and you can obviously customize it to however you like. Now, if you wanted to make it just a black and white version, all you need to do is, again, you could just go and take the fill off, and then you've got your black and white version. Easy peasy. And speaking of black and white versions, but what you can do, just like I have here, if you're wanting to add some lines, I'm gonna show you how to do this as well. If you're wanting to like, for example, this is just an idea for anyone out there. If you wanted to do like a little writing activity or writing sheet for your class, you could have a title up here. You could write whatever you wanted up here and then you could get the kids to write in the lines below. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. So with what you've just created, if you just click on the actual page, so if you just click on the actual page to the left, you'll see if I click on here, I'm, I've selected that page. So just like we did before, if I just press Command D, it'll just duplicate that whole slide as well. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to change that to white. Go shape format, go and change it to white. Now we're going to add the lines. Now this is where you don't have to be too stressed out about how to actually do these lines because sometimes when you're like, oh, how am I going to get these lines all even and in the correct spacing? I'm going to show you a simple and easy way so you don't have to stress about are they the exact amount of base apart. So if I just go to insert, I go to shapes, I'm just going to go down here to lines and I'm just going to grab just a standard line. Now I'm just gonna draw one line here and I'm just gonna quickly change the weight. So first of all, I'll change it to black by just clicking that. 
on the shape outline, go down to the arrow, click on weight, and I'll change it to four and a half point like we did with the rest of this iPad. So I've got one line there. Now I'm just gonna go Command D, grab another one, and however, whatever size I want. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna click on this line, click Shift, and so then I've got both lines selected, and I'm just going to duplicate. And I'm just going to place them down here. Now, don't worry. I'm, just, I'm literally just pressing Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. Now, you'll notice that there might be some discrepancies with the actual size of them in between. To make things really easily aligned, all you need to do is just go and select all the lines that you put down, go back up to shape format, go back to the align button, and you'll notice in the bottom area here, it says distribute. What you want here is you want it to be now distributed vertically. So to distribute it vertically, you might have seen a slight change that now spaces them out exactly the same amount apart. So that is just a simple and easy tip, and it is such a helpful tip for you to use if you are using PowerPoint. it's I love that and it's awesome. So of course, then what you could do if you wanted to add a title to that, you could just go to shapes, go to your text box, enter whatever text you want and change the text to whatever font that you like. And I'm gonna have to change it to the American spelling of favorite because we use you here. The spelling here on my PowerPoint is American. <laughs> That's why that little red line came up. So you can do that. You can add some more text at the bottom saying written by, and then that leaves space for your student or whoever to write who the, this was written by. And so that's just an example of one thing that you could do as a worksheet, an easy worksheet that you could create if you are running low on time or as a little clip art piece if you're wanting to use that in a little thing that you're trying to create for something like Teachers Pay Teachers, for example. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, moving on now, we are going to go and make this iPhone or smartphone with messages. This actually looks a little bit more complicated than it is. It is actually quite simple simple and easy and I will show you. <laughs> so I want to say though however sometimes it's good to be able to use a reference image to help with your design and for this one I did use a reference image as you could see with the one that we made prior I didn't use one but you can use reference images and the place I like to get reference images from that I guess you could say are more ethically sourced from are a place called Unsplash. So Unsplash is a place and you are able to basically use images from Unsplash as their license allows you to transform and create. So I'll show you what the license says. So in their Unsplash license, Unsplash photos are made to be used freely. Our license reflects that. All photos can be downloaded and used for free, commercial and non-commercial purposes. No permission needed, though attribution is appreciated. And the reference image I, I'm using today, I will link down below if you wanna use the exact same one. Photos cannot be sold without significant modification. Compiling photos from Unsplash to replicate a similar competing service. We're not doing any of those. In the long form here, this is where we can use this to help us. Unsplash grants you irrevocable, non-exclusive, worldwide copyright license to download, copy, modify, distribute, perform, and use photos from Unsplash for free. So we're sort of in the modify and perform sort of part. So what we're gonna do now is go back to Unsplash and we're going to type in iPhone. And I had a little look around and the one that I thought was going to be a good uh, model image to be able to replicate was this one by Matteo Vella, downloaded. So if you just click on the image, it'll come up with this here. And all you need to do is just click download free and it'll give you also a little reference for him if you want into reference, but it should just download here. So I'm just going to grab, go show and finder. I'll just place him on my desktop for now. And then I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. And then I'm gonna to go to my workspace. Now I am going to go insert pictures, picture from file. And then I'm just gonna click on the picture by Matteo click insert. So what you'll see is the iPhone that we're going to use to model or as a reference image. So what we're going to do is we're going to crop this image down because there's quite a lot of space behind it. So I'm just going to right click 
and crop. Just click it down and just crop it down just like that. And then I'm just going to spread it out as big or as small as I want it to be. And I think that's a pretty good size for me. Now, if you're wanting to follow along, what I would recommend, if you're wanting to use the same colors as I have here with this blue text box, I will show you a little trick later on, but I have written down the hex codes and they're down here. So what I'd suggest you to do before we get going with this iPhone is to go into insert create a shape. Once I've created a shape, okay, so it doesn't have to be a rectangle, it can be any shape, but what I'd suggest if you wanted to use the exact same colors is to go and change the color. So you can see it's selected here. If I go up to shape fill, this is another little trick. If you're wanting to get the exact hex code, what you can do is if you go into more fill colors, so what you'll see is you've got the color wheel, you have color sliders, color palettes, image palettes, and pencils. What we want is we want the color sliders. Now, the reason why we want this little section instead of this is the color sliders actually have the opportunity to put in the hex code. So I've got the hex codes written on the screen. So the first one would be five, five for the blue color, five, five, A, one, F, eight. And I press okay. And you'll see that that turned into the same color. I'll just show you one more time, just in case. So if I was to use the brown color, I would just go into shape fill up here, more fill colors down there. And then I'm going to go into this little section, the color sliders. I'm going to type in this brown hex code here. So it will be 9D6A25. Just click OK and it will change to that exact color. Okie dokie, so you've got your two colors. Now you just leave them on the side for now and then we're gonna get started on actually creating the iPhone. So I'm just gonna delete that for now because I've already got my color palettes right there. So first things first, when you're using a reference image is you do wanna have, make sure that when you're doing any sort of clip art on this piece of paper, you wanna make it fairly large because if you're wanting to scale it later on, you need it to be pretty large. So what I'm gonna do now though is I'm gonna click on the reference image, I'm gonna to go to picture format, and I'm actually gonna lower the transparency because we wanna be able to see what we're doing when we're using this as a guide. So we're gonna go down to, you can go to any of these transparencies. I would say possibly this one at 65% would be just fine. So that you can see now it's going to, when we draw over it, it's not gonna be so harsh in the color and you'll be able to see a little bit better what you're actually doing. So now we're gonna go into insert, we're going to go to shapes, we're gonna use our trusty old <laughs> rounded rectangle, and then we're just gonna kind of model the actual shape. So you'll notice that I'm gonna to have to alter this a little bit again at the little yellow bar, and you can kind of change it to however you like, but it's, if you wanted to try and use it as a guide, just try and model it to the reference image as best as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but just, model it as best as you can. All right, so we've got that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go no shape fill for now so I can see the next part that I'm doing. All right, so I've got that as my line. I'm just going to make it a little bit more precise. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be similar. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna click on the shape again and I'm just going to go Command D to duplicate it again. And I'm just going to do the inner screen now. And again, it does not have to be perfect, but we, what we are going to do is we are going to align our shapes. So sometimes to make it a bit easier to see, we're gonna give them a color. So we'll just give the background a blue, a light blue and the front one can be a bit more of a darker blue. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the front image with the back image by selecting, by holding down shift, and we're gonna go align again and go align to center, so we know that's nice and central. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just change the color of this again, and we're going to go to no fill. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same for that one, no fill. We're just gonna use another rounded rectangle to add this little part here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna Command D again. We've got the shape already there. And we're just going to draw that and we'll have to make it a bit more bubbly. So we'll just align it a bit more like that. And just to make it more bubbly, just use that little yellow box. You can 
see how that moves it back and forth it can be really sharp or more of a rounded edge that's what we want that rounded edge and we'll leave it about there All right next we're just going to go command d again and we're going to actually just do this little button here on the side so we're just going to command d that little part that we just did turn him around to the side now we will most likely have to alter this one a little bit more once we've done the feel of the color again but we're just going to place him just like that as the reference image shows and leave him there for now okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to give these colors now that we've got the basic outlines we're going to give them colors again so we'll go and click on the back shape we're going to click him and we're going to make him black now we're going to just click on the front shape we're going to click and make him white and then we're going to go and make this top one black and then this side one black now you'll notice that there is still some blue outline so what i'll do is i'll just select the whole thing and I'll just go and make sure that the outlines, so go to the shape outline, make sure they're all black as well. Okay, awesome. It's looking pretty good so far. So what we're going to do now, we can probably even get rid of this reference image. We don't really need that anymore. What we are going to do is, however, make sure that this is aligned to this. So we just might have to make that go down a slight bit more because I could just see it was poking out the top there. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to bevel this shape to make it look a bit more 3D-like. So we're just going to select with our mouse all of those things that we've got on the screen here. Then we're going to go to shape format and then underneath shape format under here you'll see it says shape effects just go to the little arrow and you'll notice there's a little section called bevel alrighty so the bevel that we want on this particular one is this end one which is called the cool slant so if we click on the cool slant you'll see that that kind of bevels it all a little bit. Now, if you don't like this being beveled, this inner one, you can turn that off. You can turn that one off by just going back to shape effects, going bevel and clicking no bevel if you prefer it looking like that and just the outside being beveled. With this one here, I took the bevel off. I didn't have it beveled, but it depends on what you obviously like. So, you can leave it with the bevel on or leave it off. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now, we've got our basic shape, is we're going to just add the four little circle um, bevel dots that I've added up here. You can see in this one here, these four little dots. We're going to do that and then we'll add the messages. So to do that, all you need to do is go insert and we're going to grab a circle. You could look at this reference image and you could just kind of have a little look, see how they're gone here and just add them oh, I might increase this so you can kind of see it a little bit better than transparency so you better see that a bit better if I do it that way so you better see I'm just using this as a reference on the side here and I can just grab all of that and make sure that they're all aligned by going to shape format align align to bottom they're all good now we just make sure that they're distributed evenly so to do that we can do distribute horizontally this time and that's all good. So then we can move that to over here. And of course you can change the color if that's not the color that you like, but we can just go here to shape effects, go down to bevel. And if we choose this one here, which is a circle, you have more of a circle kind of looking bevel that looks like this. Otherwise you can go and choose back in the shape effects. You can go to the bevel that is called the cool slant again. And that's going to give it more of a, like a pointed look, sort of similar to this one here. Now, I think I made these one a little bit smaller. All right, so these ones are slightly bigger than the one that I had as the preview. So you can make them smaller if you like. Otherwise, you can just keep them that size. I'm just going to first, though, change the color. I'm going to make them a bit darker. So if I just go to the color bucket and go the third one down it'll make it a little bit less obvious and make it a little bit more like it suits and matches the actual phone so i might leave it like that all right now very simply if you're wanting to add like i have here these little messages very simple very easy all you need to do is go up here go into insert go back to shapes and you'll notice down the very bottom if you scroll down 
you have this awesome little call out section and you've got this one here that's called the rounded rectangular call out. The rounded rectangle is just awesome. So you can just stretch him out to however you want. However, you will have to adjust the little point to however, whatever way you want. So depending on who's texting, who's talking, like whatever side you need to bring it to, you can do that however you wish. So we're just gonna do that. And just to make sure that that is aligned central, I can just, again, press shift to click on that back white board here. Click on the white shape there as the screen and just go back to align to center and we'll move it again into that central position. So to do that, now to make it look a bit more 3D, we're gonna also again bevel it. So we're just gonna first change the color. And so we might go just down to that first, just this first one here. Uh, the white background one, darker 5%. It's just underneath the white. And we'll just click that and we will say no outline. And then what we're going to do is just go to shape effects, go down to bevel. And we're actually not going to do this bevel this time. We're not going to do the cool slant bevel. We're actually going to do the circle bevel. Now you can play around with this. I will show you what the cool slant does look like. I prefer the circle bevel, but you can choose a cool slant if you like. I just think this one looks a little bit more realistic and I like this one a little bit better. All right, so what you're gonna do now is you're just going to go Command D and just going to drag it down. So that's just going to duplicate that. And we're going to then go and change the color, change this to the blue hex code that I included here on screen, if you wanna do that. So. All you need to do to be able to do that is just click on the shape that wants to be filled, back up to shape format, back up to shape fill, and go to more fill colors. And then what you want to do, doesn't matter which panel you're in, because we just need to access this little eyedropper here. So we need this eyedropper, we're just gonna click on him and it's gonna allow us to eyedrop anywhere on this page. I'm gonna eyedrop this color here and just press okay and that will change it exactly like that. Alternatively, you can type in the hex code if you really want, but that's I find this way a little bit easier and quicker. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just going to actually change the way that it's facing first by just clicking that way, altering it and then seeing that I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to go Command D, get the exact same one there. And then I'm going to go Command D for the blue one again and bring that down here. And again, you can make these as big or as small as you like. And don't worry because again, if you're wanting to center, center them and make them a bit more aligned with each other, we can do that. So we're just going to select all of them, click on shape format, go back to align, go align to left, and that's all good. And then we'll go align, align to center, and that's all good too. What we can do actually is we're going to go now that they're all selected is we're going to click shift, hold shift down on your keyboard, click the white screen, and then we're going to just align that one more time. And then that will be now very much central into that phone. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to add some text really. So just go to shapes, go to your text box and add whatever text you like. Hello there. Change the text to whatever text that you like. This one I'm using here is called Avocado Sands that I got off Creative Fabrica. It is my go-to. I love this font. You can do whatever. You could say whatever. This could be a great idea like if you are, I guess, a high school teacher or something like that and you're wanting to kind of engage the kids in some sort of activity that they have to read, you could have it on something fun like this. And there's just so many opportunities and things you just can get creative with something like this. And if you are wanting to go and add the little smiley face, now this one I would say is probably a bit too close looking to the actual emoji smiley face. So I don't know if I would be wanting to use this in one of my works. I'd wanna kind of change the smiley face up a little bit more. Uh, but to make a smiley face is very simple as well. All you need to do is go into insert, shapes. We're gonna go to the oval shape, which actually looks like a circle. Draw him out. And we can just go up to gradient fill and it will automatically usually turn it to this yellow color. Otherwise, if it doesn't, then just go to the preset gradients underneath that option again. And you can click on this second one here. And if I click on that, that'll just change it to make it look a bit more like this light coming from the top. We can turn off the line by just clicking here down below. It says line, click no line, that will turn it off. And then we're just going to grab the circle again now you'll see here too, this is like an easy way to grab some of your shapes as well. If you've got this little bar here, you can do that also. Otherwise, you can also just go back to insert. But you just want to go and grab that 
oval again. Just draw an actual oval with it. And we're just going to use that brown that I've included in the hex code to the left here. So I'm going to go more fill colors, grab the eyedropper, click on that, and then it will change it to that. Take away the outline, make it a bit smaller. We'll go Command D to duplicate that again. And then just to make sure that these are aligned, we're going to go up to align, up to top. And you'll notice that this align tool is going to be your best friend when it comes to aligning things and making sure that they look right. So I really recommend using that if you haven't used it before. What I'm also going to show you is the little mouth. So I use the moon for a lot of mouths that I use and create with clip art. And the great thing about the moon is you can like adjust it to sort of however skinny, however uh, thick that you like it. Just bring it down. And the great thing too, once you've used a color, uh, usually it will be the last color that you've used. It will show up as the paint bucket. So I can just click that paint bucket now and it will go to that color. Uh, but if it's not the color that you want, then obviously then you have to go and choose a color. Just turn the outline off for that now. Bring that down. And you've got a cute little smiley face there. You can obviously, again, adjust it however you want. And also, if you wanted to change the color of this little guy, you can also, again, use these little bars or use these little nodes. You can add a nice, more orange color looking to it. Bring that down a bit so there's a bit more light coming up there. But yeah, you can just alter and play around with it. It's really fun. It's really cute. You can also, again, like make it a bit more 3D looking by just selecting the circle. We can bevel it by going to shape effects, bevel, and we can make it look super cute just like that. If you want to choose a different type of bevel, you can go and choose that same one that we used before, that cool slant one. So that is the tutorial, you guys. Now, I want to say before you run away, the way that you're going to be able to use these in your work, because obviously, like I was saying, if you are someone that are wanting to, you know, make your own clip art to be able to use in your own commercial works without having to have the restrictions of others, uh, or even if you're just like, I just want to create something quickly and I don't want to have to pay for something and I, if you have the time to create it then great you can do something like this but what I want to share with you is how to obviously export it now if you were to say like if you were to try and move this around you wouldn't be able to take the whole thing you able to use this as an actual piece of clip art we actually need to turn it into clip art so the way that we do that I'll just insert a new slide here so we can see how we're going to do that so I'm just going to go back to here. What we're going to do to be able to turn it into clip art is first of all, we need to group it. So we need to select the whole thing and not the picture. Let's move that to the side. Select the whole thing that we want to group, every little piece. And we have to make sure carefully that everything is selected from what we can see. We're going to click control right on a Mac. Uh, it might just be right click on a PC. But what we're going to go down and do is click on group. And we'll just click group. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to group it all together so it's like pretty much on one layer you could you could think of it as basically. It's not on all individual pieces. It's stuck together now. However, if I was to try and, you know, make that smaller just by grouping it, you're going to see that it's, got, it's not going to look right. So we need to actually turn it to clip art. So just because you've grouped it doesn't mean it's clip art. So what we need to do then is control right click and we're going to then go as save as picture. This is going to turn it into a PNG or we need to make sure that we save it as a PNG but first retitle it so let's just do iPhone edited. I'm going to choose my desktop because that's where I'm going to save it for now and you can see here save as type. You have a few different things you can save it as. We don't want anything else but PNG okay so we just can click that because that will allow a transparent background if you go and click JPEG it will mean that there's going to be a white background we don't want that we want just PNG and then click save and then what you'll see here in a sec when I insert this so I'll go and insert this next door so I'm just going to go insert picture picture from file I'm going to go and select my iPhone edited that we just made click insert and what you'll see is when I resize this down now, it will all stay together because it's actually physically now turned into clip art. You can do some fun things also like I did 
in the beginning you'll be able to see here I've actually added slight drop shadow here and just a nice little shadow on the edge it might be very subtle but I've actually added a little bit of an extra effect to that and you can do that with yours as well to make it look a bit more realistic and all you need to do again just click on the clip art image picture format go to picture effects and then go down to you could do this one actually shadow and you could do something like this and you'll see it has a bit of a drop shadow down below so you guys that is the tutorial i hope that you learned something new i hope that you had a go if you haven't but what i'm really just trying to share with you guys is if you are someone that's like say wanting to start out on teachers pay teachers but you don't have a lot of money right now to spend on clip art you know you can get creative and make things in powerpoint powerpoint is actually such an amazing tool to be able to create your own clip art in surprisingly enough because the actual options for the shapes the shape menu this is just limitless now to your imagination i love the shape menu on powerpoint and i will say at the moment i'm currently trying to learn adobe illustrator and oh my goodness it's literally doing my head in because it's so much harder in regards to like the shapes how to create them and the paths and i'm just trying to really learn that now PowerPoint I'm quite comfortable in, but when it comes to Adobe Illustrator, I'm really, I feel like I'm just swimming in the deep, but I am slowly learning and I'm really kind of getting over my initial hesitation and fear and trying to like learn it. So in the future, I want to do some more like tutorials also about Adobe Illustrator and Procreate for you guys as well. This is just a fun little PowerPoint one because it's simple and easy and it's just something that like comes quite naturally to me now. So with that said, thank you for watching. I'm grateful to have you here today watching and learning from me and I hope that you learned something new and I will see you in my talking head in a moment. Alrighty guys, that is the tutorial. I love PowerPoint a lot. It is where I started my journey on creating clip art. As I've moved on to Procreate, I definitely would say Procreate is a tool of choice. At the moment, I'm looking and I'm playing around at the moment with Adobe Illustrator. Now, let me just give you a quick heads up. It's pretty hard, um, but I'm hoping in time, giving myself a little bit more practice that I'm going to get better. The reason why I love PowerPoint is because out of all the programs that I've actually used, I would say honestly, PowerPoint is the easiest one, has an amazing bank of shapes that you can utilize and use to create with. It is literally limitless to your imagination. It not only has that, it has different shape effects and you know drop shadows and things that are just so easy to place and use and create with. So thank you once again and I'll see you in my next video. Adios!